Jason always putting me on the spot, so why not? So we got Firebat against RDU right now, and... Um, oh, Firebat um, versus RDU. Is really actually. good. Both really good players. Is this an elimination match? Is this how you open a show, guys? Really? Uh, you are the one eating right now, Eko. Anyway, guys, welcome back I'm to doing Seed better Story than Egg Up. <laughs> welcome back to Seed Story Cup 4. We're going to have a really strong match for you guys. We're bringing you Group C. He's and so the professional. first match of the day uh, for Group C is going to be RDU versus Firebat. And this is going to be a big one. This explains a lot, but this is not an elimination match, so they can win or lose. doesn't matter, right? Yeah, oh, but still, like... You usually story. like to win a bit more because it gives you, like, a like a safety net that you can like lose one and still win one. So I think both players are actually going to try to win them. But on the other hand, you know, Firebat, I feel like he can give this game to, to RDU and just win to other. Like he was on a tight spot last ma last group. Yeah, absolutely. We and felt he, like but, he but was. He, he's really good. So yeah, I guess he could like just lose this and then just move on with his life and win two more. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't like, put it past him. Kind of like But I, I, think he's, I actually think he is going to try to win though. Okay. Do we know, uh, do we know what decks they are playing? Um... No, we don't because they can't reset the decks. Do we know if they are sober? Oh, Have they slept like at all? Um, Firebat, I can confirm, was up with me until about four in the morning. So um, I remember I, him I, taking I'm Red pretty, Bulls at I'm two a.m. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure he did not uh, practice the Reno Jackson build yet. But um, is he playing it? I don't think so. So yeah, yeah, when you when you're up till four in the morning, you don't play Reno Jackson next morning. True, that's true. Ika, would you consider playing Reno Jackson? Yeah, of course. I would consider playing Reno Jackson. I would um, not be confident enough, though, to bring it to this tournament because it's actually a card that has a mechanic that requires a quite a bit of oh, oh, figuring actually, out. How confident were you uh, in the egg race? Did, did you practice that one? No, I didn't. I'm, I'm, I'm natural, but Toyota screwed it up. You were, uh, super, super, <laughs> you were super serious about right. the match. This wasn't a. This isn't like a German hobby that you, you don't do this in like grade school. And no, they do oh. it every breakfast. I thought it was just a German thing. <laughs> no, it's just for fun. Okay. All right. How guys. do you explain how you lost them? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't <laughs> matter anyway because we have a great match on our hands. It's RDU versus Firebat, and we see RDU on the mid-range hunter uh, or hybrid hunter, and. Um, Fire bet on Control Warrior. Yep, and he's got an Armor Smith Accolade Star. That looks pretty good. And Artie is just deciding if he wants to keep a high main, if not both. Uh, pretty good against Control Warrior, if you know it's Control Warrior. Yeah, absolutely. I think keeping one is, is absolutely fine, especially if you have the coin. Uh, two might be too much. You also have some early early curve as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm. If let's say you had a hand with one drop, two drop, and then two high mains, would you con consider keeping all of this? I, I, would, I actually I would, keep, would, probably. I would probably keep it all. Yeah, uh, It's so strong against Control Warrior, and it, the chance that you get like a three drop and a four drop off the top uh, at some point... Yeah. Especially like, when you're playing Horse Rider, you don't, you're not only limited to those animal companions, you actually have like four three drops, so it like, kind of increases the odds a lot that you're going to hit your three and curve out. Yeah. I really like the Horse, horse Rider as a card. It's, it's kind of like Wolf Rider, but with... Um, more flexibility, like you can trade into minions now? Yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to only go face. It's uh, definitely a, a, a good uh, good card like that. And who do you guys pick as a favorite here in the Hybrid Hunter versus uh, Control Warrior matchup? Um, it's like, it's all about Hunter actually curving out properly. Like, uh, if Hunter misses its curve, then Warrior is a huge favorite. And sometimes, like, with Horse Riders and things like that in your deck, you don't necessarily have a target. You don't necessarily have optimal plays every turn. And Artie's hand is looking very clunky. He did get the second high main back. He mulliganed it and got it back. And now he's like, he got a quick shot, a kill command. DBC doesn't really get any value, right? But Yeah, this is not what he yeah. wanted. Um, so he needs something to pressure in the, in, in the early game. On the other hand, do we know what Firebat is really playing? Like, this is this the Bash version? Is this the version with Shredders? Or is this the version more control heavy? Um, usually. Oh, wow. And uh, <laughs> Firebat are trying to play some mind games because he realizes his hand is actually pretty good if Armor Smith Accolade and RDU is thinking. So yeah, RDU said, told me recently the reason why he's doing what he does right now, roping on turn one, is basically so he can get in the zone. Like, just he said he got this technique from Life Coach down. Just focus on the game like and uh, blend out everything else that uh, around you so you can just focus 100% on the game. And he, like, just takes the first couple of turns to do that, basically. Yeah, it makes sense. Like, uh, zone is really important in Hearthstone. Uh, just focus on the game, absolutely. 
no distractions whatsoever. Yeah, and it's so easy to actually lose it as well. Yeah. Like someone eating on a casting desk can absolutely distract you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it really makes you hungry, kind of. Yeah, I mean that's why I brought my uh, pasta salad here along with my beer. It's kind of like a douchebag move, right? Like because I'm hungry, purple. I'm kind of hungry. Should we, we just leave? You could have just done the same as me. Maybe we should just leave Ecop here. I, I'm sure like Twitch chat will be really <laughs> static. Happy. Absolutely static. Uh, so I actually there was a really tough turn two from Firebat here. He had the fire or axe for that be so you can just play the armor smith into it. Uh, chose the armor smith. Don't fault him for it. They're both like very reasonable. This play Zuka is a somewhat of a punish. Uh, definitely deals with the armor smith and like the if he uh, if he didn't play the armor smith, like, RDU had nothing to do this turn. Yeah. Well, it still looks bad for RDU for now because his turns are blind, more or less, to, to, to five. Hey, I mean, just believe in the power of the top decks. He's going to get, like, Animal Companion uh, on turn three and then Shredder on turn four and then just kind of the time in. I that, believe. That's how Hunter works? Yeah, it does. Um, Look at uh, this. The draw. Oh. oh, that's a three drop. It's Wait. a three drop. Um, it's definitely a three. It does cost three. That's the wrong uh, three drop. Does anyone know if uh, RDU is actually playing El Tigre? LT Grey, I, we see an orange play it. Yeah, that's, but that card's I, really I, good. I doubt that RDU um, has the same practice uh, group as Orange does, so I think the list might divert a little bit. Okay. So. What's the benefit of the LT Grey? Um, it's, it's got a really cool name. It has stealth. It hits for five, and it's a, a nice uh, bridge card towards high main. Like uh, the Hard five drop, the five drops are actually just. Low feb right now in, mm. in Hunter. Yeah. So if you miss low feb, you don't have a five. So it's like it's a second five, double your chances of actually curving out. Makes sense. Well, he has a better bridge for the high main on turn five. Which is the coin, yeah, absolutely. The, it's just the thing a matter is, of doing things in, in between here. The thing is that Hunter that has so many good three drops that just playing a three drop and hero powering on turn five is not that devastating. It's, it's fine. Hunter is fine with yeah. that. Um, and uh, from Firebrass' perspective, he doesn't actually have a useful turn here. He can actually just drop this big game hunter. You know your opponent doesn't have bow, or else the Acolyte would have been bowed over the quick shot. Or he can develop this Fiery and armor up. Pretty conservative play. Uh, if he knows like RD is playing Dr. Boom, mm. definitely won't be holding that big game hunter for later. Well, there is a Glaive Zuka, right? So As well, yeah. It just dies on board. Four damage isn't exactly what you're looking for in the con from the control warrior side here. Um, Signed is actually like, it's a broken card on two, and it's actually a reasonable four drop to go along with the Hunter Hero Power on four. Absolutely. And also the fact that he will be able to, to get the secret earlier. Yeah. And if, that's, if that's Freezing Trap, this uh, coin high main is actually going to be uncontested. Any minion Firebat plays will get Frozen Traps, so um, yeah, the high main will just kind of be on naked board because of the Scientist. If you even kill it, because you might try to go for Ooh. a Brawl board. He's got like weapon charges, and you just kind of want to be doing something with your turn. So I'm not expecting him to kill the scientist. Probably just shield block and armor up. Mm -hmm. unless, he draw, unless he draws like the second armor smith here. Oh, mm. there you go. That's, nice. a, that's a good play, Farbat. That's a good play. Not bad. Perfect minion to have for the freezing trap right now. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't die on board. Um, and the shield maiden does contest the high main. It, like, it doesn't just, uh, it, it, it's a, it has five attacks, so it can trade in, and there's no freezing trap on the board because the armor smith's there. You can see the world champion powers being yeah. channeled for Firebat. Yeah, top decking is one outer. Um, so we see Revenge being drawn, a kind of an unconventional card for Control Warriors. Not many um, lists play that card, and RDU was kind of trash talking it a little bit. He's like, he's playing Revenge Warrior, like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, Revenge is like. Um, it's like a card that you never need if you're actually winning, but things go wrong. Like you don't always have that fire war axe, that death bite, and sometimes you take damage and things go wrong. And revenge is like an excellent uh, recovery mechanism after everything is wrong. You can still use it with Grimash as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's uh, like, an it's additional like Grimash act better. better. I think most of the time, if, if that would be a whirlwind, yep. most of the time you will have that one more mana to actually. Cast I, it. I would say after like turn five or so, revenge and whirlwind are like the same mana cost. Yeah. That one extra mana isn't a huge deal. Yeah. But in, in the early game sometimes, like you, like against turn three muster for battle with the whirlwind, you get to squeeze in that armor. But that's not actually that relevant. Uh, uh, second high main off the top. Uh, isn't it or, uh, off Juggler the top. off the top, excuse me. <laughs> and there's two kill commands in hand, uh, so he can deal with, the, uh, deal with the shield maiden with one of the kill commands. And that's that rough. protects his first high main. 
Yeah, that's probably better than just slamming a second high main and going for phase. It's very close. If you can't deal with the first high main, how do you deal with the second, right? So if you just high main and hit him in the face with the first high main. Brawl is always a possibility. Absolutely, but both your minions have death rattle and the shield maiden doesn't. So yeah, one of the trades gets to happen, but on average you're going to end up with three two twos or a high main. Well, those are the two scenarios. Yeah. That aren't. Yeah, unless the Shield Maiden goes face and then you end up with four two twos and the Shield Maiden is still there, but that'd be very unlucky. All right, All right. double All right. high main the dream against the control warrior, right? Yeah, now. absolutely. Uh, the, what could be better is if you actually draw a web spinner now and uh, high main number three. Oh, yeah, that would be sick. This is how you play. This is how you play hunter. But however, we we don't. Th I don't think that there's actually web spinner in our use deck, unfortunately. Oh, is he playing uh, like leper gnomes and? Uh, yeah, he's playing so. someone of a hybrid build. Yeah, he's like leper gnomes and Argent horse riders, right? Well, this is a nice board to actually kill with bash and stuff. Like you don't have to really brawl this. Uh yeah. You um, can just kill like one, slam, bash, slam, slam bash the second one, kill one with weapon. Yeah, and there's gonna unfortunately like that leaves three two twos up, unless I'm not seeing. Maybe you can go with the armor smith as well. Uh, Gain one armor there. And ooh, execute. Does that help? It does help, because now you can then now now you can get the the number down to two two twos instead of three. Uh, that's the big difference in using execute here. Uh, you mess your armor up, which is the same as killing a two two in a way. Yeah. I like it, and he's still in a good shape with regards to health. Oh, this is oh. Okay, I didn't see this, but um, he ends up with a five, uh, five three against three two twos, which is Even somewhat con somewhat contests the board for sure. Uh, the fire war axe and uh, the shield maiden will kill two of them next turn, and love have both tops a pretty good one. Yeah, it's great because he'll be able to block the brawl, and especially with this juggle. That's actually that's uh that's the key to this turn. If, uh, well, he can our, attack with the. Well, actually, yeah, you're right. Like, if he hits the Conser jug Conserving uh, a 2-2 two -two on the board is actually really important in the long run. Um, it's even, yeah. And you're, like, at this stage in the game from the Hunter, both your high mains already already died. Uh, this, if a Baron Geddon comes into Firebat's hand, the game's over, so yeah, you're not you, even thinking about it. Do you that. even risk it? Like, you can go with the Abuse of Surgeons. Ooh. Oh. It's so much weaker. It's so much weaker. I think you got to take a risk here. All right, RD is going for the knife. That was a good Gets play, it. RDU. Hit the hit the juggle. <laughs> hit the 50-50. That's a good play. He's following on the Froden hype. RDU thinks he can free off Firebat with the Hunter. Uh, Despite's actually a pretty good draw because the Whirlwind effect next turn will actually deal one. And with the re uh, combined with the Revenge, that's actually a board clear for next turn. That so, is true. Uh, definitely killing the knife juggler with this Despite. Uh, and armor up. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you could also just throw out the armor smith. What is the armor smith are you gonna do? Uh, the thing with, I guess you would be dead to double kill command anyways, and that happens to be the hand. So that's nine plus ten plus two is twenty-one exactly. All right, so um, already gets it. So you remember that double kill command early? Worked out. Like I was already questioning it on uh, turn three when he used the quick shot over uh, the kill command on the act because it's mana efficient and. Yeah. Uh, the quick shot can get you a card, but he decided to use the quick shot, and because of that, he actually has lethal now. Yeah, it was interesting how he mapped the game where he just uh, filled the turns with whatever he got uh, before yeah. the high mains, and it just slammed to high mains and fall out with kill commands. Yeah. So, pretty good play from RDU. Yeah, definitely well played by the Hunter here, and uh, Soto, last year standing, the Hunter advances, Control Warrior is knocked out. Uh, I don't actually know what Firebats classes that are, but what would you. Uh, what would you follow up as Firebat to beat this hunter? Well, he's taking a rogue, so we kind of know that oh. right now. Which is, I don't know if it's like the, the great take. Like, Iko, what do you think about it, rogue versus hunter? The slower the hunter deck is, the uh, in general, the more favored the rogue will be. Because like, the, if the hunter runs stuff like high mains, you can just zap those yeah. and uh, have Six a huge tempo swing. Six mana for two mana sounds good yeah. to me. Yeah, and um, it's all about tempo in this matchup. If it's, if you're running against face hunter as, as a rogue, um, if you don't draw your healing, you're basically dead on the spot. Yeah, absolutely. And this turn not one Lepernome is really awkward. Uh, Firebat on coin doesn't really want to coin dagger it, and when you don't coin dagger it, you tend to take eight damage from it. Um, so that, that always feels bad, man. I'm so amazed, Purple, that you're so sober today. Thank you. I'm. Um, He's been. Really I was. I was actually playing today, and um, 
playing some more later. None in this room. I'll be playing WCA later. Uh, so trying to stay responsible. All right, so only six from the, the left for Gnome, because there's a lot, you usually take eight when there's like a juggler follow-up and you like coin SI or something. Second fireball for one mana. Yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, that's why a good it's card. my favorite card. The Leper Nimsh. As the, indeed a good card. And does RDU just uh, go on this, this smart plan, or is he actually holding? He's holding. His hand is like kind of damage-centric, but he does have a Shredder follow-up, so... It's not terrible. Uh, Depending on what his follow-up is, like he can transition into like kind of either game plan, holding the bow charge yeah. just one turn. It's, it's really important that he has the shredder. He has the shredder. Yeah. So for five bats, does he drop this big game hunter? Um, like it looks like a redagger turn, just based on him actually swinging with the weapon. Uh, don't mind it. Uh, does he equip the deadly poison? I think you do. Um, it's allowed. Uh, I mean, why not use the mana right now? It's not like you need the deadly poison to enable any combo right now uh, in the, on the following turns. Yep, and uh, turn four looks uh, pretty solid for the Shredder. Juggler's just, you get to squeeze in the hero power, but it's less sticky minion, and dies on board, while the Shredder doesn't quite do that yet. The Shredder is really powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, bit of a slower uh, turn for RDU, like, Shred like oh, and he starts swinging with the, the bow. Uh, so he's, got, he's gonna have five, eight, 10 next turn, putting his opponent into nine. Uh, it, given the, the Shredder sticks to the board, of course. Firebat hands seems pretty clunky. Like, what you want to do as a rogue, you want to uh, have some kind of board. Yep. Some minion that will actually stay so you can buff it with all those tinkers. Yeah, unfortunately, here it's kind of looking like he already needs to Blade Flurry without developing behind it. And they, why Blade Flurry is a good card is. Like, why Blade Flurry is, like, stronger than Flame Strike is that with Flame, Flame Strike for 7 mana, you can't actually play anything behind it. But Rogue can actually, like, say with a Violet Teacher, you make three tokens and clear a board, and then you're so far ahead in tempo. But, uh, oh. Tempo oh. BGH it is. Oh, and the coin sap, okay. So, yeah, as mentioned, like, he really needs a minion on the board, and he goes for it. He wants to, to force weapon attack. Yeah, like just answering the board is not enough because the hunter will just uh, continue applying pressure and you just have, have, don't have anything on the board to raise him. Yeah. This big GH is kind of the first step towards the uh -huh. game plan to like put some counter aggression on the board. If RDU actually makes like the double juggler play, which is like insane value, right? You get four juggles from that creeper, yeah, push a bunch of damage. It's, that so, actually it's gives so vulnerable to AoE, though. Absolutely. It gives, like, Firebat, that Blade Flurry in Firebat's hand would give him a, a way to just jump right back into this game. And uh, he's going for it, apparently. Oh, no, he's still thinking. Like, it's so enticing to get that, that juggler value. Because then you also don't need to use your bow. So, like, the bow is three damage. You get four four juggles. So that's, like, kind of... By making the not Shredder play, you actually push seven extra damage, which is actually huge. So, like, I don't fault RDU at all for this. This is, like, a nice play. Yeah, definitely. And it also checks if if a Firebat even has the AoE. Yeah. Like, he needs a Blade Flurry or, like, a spell that... He's going for the eviscerate here too. Yeah, and he's probably he's looking to pick up a backstab target here. And, oh, uh, that's all right. Doomsayer is kind of a backstab target. Oh, I do not like the swing with that. Yeah, he has yeah, so no. many weapon buffs in hand. Um, yeah, Doomsayer was pretty good for Firebat in this, but I get to actually preserve that backstab, which will be actually it's pretty much just a heal later in the game. Yeah. So far to you, this turn is just uh, your power pass. He might actually. He's gonna put freezing. the freezing trap up. He might even put the quick shot to the face. 
Um, his opponent's so low that it's not wrong. You probably maybe want to conceal the damage so that your opponent doesn't feel like healing at the start. Well, um, I, Firebat's actually way too good for that. Like, he knows his opponent has three cards in hand. He didn't swing with the bow, thus there's not another weapon. And there's not a minion, thus it's Double kind of, it's, it's like three spells. So, yeah, yeah. Unleash is right there. Uh, kill Command's right there. Quick Shot's right there. That's all in the range. Uh, so, yeah, this Violet Teacher actually needs to get played. Uh, I don't actually expect Firebat to actually make tokens with it, though. Yeah, like the last card, right? Yeah. But then, like, what, what, do you, what do you really do? So, you can Deadly Poison. How much? So, you have three mana open. Yep. Um... With after the Violet Teacher, yeah, uh, you could you could also just start counting your damage and like deadly oil eviscerate and then oil again next turn. Is that lethal? Uh, it's I, great. I like, like how about Blood Mage oil deadly? You hit face for six. Next turn you have three from oil, four from oil, three from oil again. So you have twelve, and the Evis is seventeen. So you're just like a, a bit short. He's taking the gamble that there's no niche. Yeah. I, I feel like it's like a slight misplay. When, you're, when your 100 opponent's holding that many cards, you know what it is. And is that game? Yeah, absolutely. The second abusive adds a couple he more damage. He didn't even need it. All right, so already you're taking game number two versus Farbat. And Farbat is now left with the Freeze Mage. Yeah, and actually I'm surprised he didn't counter Q uh, with Freeze Mage. Because... Freeze Mage is really good against Hunter. Ice be. Barrier, I, I Heal Bot. I personally disagree. I think uh, with the Rogue, he had a way better shot of actually really? hitting the Hunter. Yeah, for sure. When your Rogue's teched with like cards like Big Game Hunter, it's like it definitely decreases the odds for Rogue a bit. That is true, but the, I feel like I feel like the Rogue in general performs well. Uh, it's like more like a 50-50. I think it actually, in my opinion at least, the Freeze Mage is unfavored against Hunter. Okay. And why is that? Fair. It's just so hard to deal with the Shredders and the High Mains. Um, That's so interesting, this Mulligan. Like, are you considering high keeping High Main off the Mulligan's uh, Freeze Mage? And yeah, it's definitely one of the key cards to beat the Freeze yeah. Mage. And it's, very hard, it's very hard to deal with it. Like, you need, like, yeah. at least, you need two turns to deal with it, like with a Fireball into a Blizzard or an Explosive Sheep or something like that. It's like a lot, like it's, you, Freeze Mage needs more than six mana to deal with it, so it's really nice. If Ardu was on the play, I would not be surprised if he mulliganed the high main away. However, he has the coin, so he has the yeah. smooth mana curve for sure, and uh, keeping the high main right now is really good for Ardu. So far about God's Ice Barry, which is really good versus Agro, but he doesn't have any draw here. Yeah, unfortunately for him, his hand's completely reactive, and there wasn't like a coin two drop, so like this Doomsayer or this Frostbolt don't actually do anything. You can't like mulligan those cards though, like you can't like pitch Frostbolt and like get coin knife juggler and just concede, right? Yeah. And yeah, it's always a little bit um, unlucky to not have the coin as a reactive deck because you don't have enough uh, cards. Um, like if you don't have the coin, you, uh, you want to be the proactive deck. And yeah, absolutely. Firebat like you, have any Like off coin, cards. your Lepronome gets better and yeah, it's just like way better. By the way, Ikop, I think you got some salad in your mic. Oh, do I know? <laughs> 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 oh, it happens. All right, guys, we stopped the cop. No, Got him. Fine. It's, it's fine. It's, it's barely. Back. It's barely visible. <laughs> okay. Um, well, Shredder is really good, and then he will have the high main into high main. So in yeah, this is coin curve. high main into high main. That is completely busted. With a low feb after that, that's sign me up. I want that hand. For fire, for fire, but they just frostbolt. Do you do you even frostbolt this? Uh, you actually, I don't think you do. I think you just ping the shredder, set up the onboard trade. Whoa, that is okay. That is very cute. And the reason that he's pinging his own scientist is there's a freezing trap up, and you eventually do want to get the secret out. So yeah. if you ping it over two turns, um, you will, so and it, it will end up dying. It, it's really smart because. As the hunter, you probably don't want to attack the scientist. Oh, that attack will never happen. The hunter is going face with that shredder exactly. 100% of the time. Exactly, and he wants to get a second ice yeah. barrier. Um, what I don't, right. what I don't, what I uh, don't understand, however, is like he's got a um, this conical doomsayer, which is a very likely follow up to that turn, and um, that kind of means like Barbat's not expecting this to go off at there all. It can be a silence. Yeah, he's just not expecting this Doomsayer to ever go off here. Maybe he's trying to do the Ostkaka move, you know, like ping your own stuff. It's kind of yeah. like Ostkaka and Forsen move in, a, in one, like, in one move, right? Because Forsen frostbolted his mad scientist. Yeah. 
for the win and Ostkaka pinged his face. Pinged his face. So far, yeah, yeah. far about this. Somewhere in between, he's right. Like just <laughs> pinging his mad scientist for the profit. Like we might not see it yet, but yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure that Firebat is just planning on hero powering that. Uh, not, I mean, just Alex Strazar in the face. Yeah, uh, so the, the, face, the, the face damage exactly. isn't relevant at all. The one to the face will never uh, be relevant. And is this Doomsayer actually just going off here? That is good news for Firebat. That is very good news. Dealing with that first high main and um, he gets that ice block. Oh boy, that is a whirlwind zap -matic. That's a good frostable target. Yeah, absolutely. That is That cannot live. Yeah, this turn is not bad, actually. So, Acolyte of Pain, ping it. I think uh, Firebat was actually kind of hoping there'd be like a less uh, less of a pressure minion off that Shredder, so like, you could actually probably just drop an Archmage on 7. Um, uh. Wouldn't that be too aggressive? Absolutely not. It's like uh, Ice Bear in this matchup uh, tends to be a, f a third Ice Bear, just like a, another heal. Uh, because you once, you Alex Ra there. once you Alex Raza them, you... 15 is very easy. You don't need additional fireballs. This isn't like against Druid or against Control Warrior, where they can build or against Priest, where they can build up their health. You can also exhaust them at some point. Like it's yep. not about you winning. It's not. It's about them not winning. Yeah, they, they just kind of run out of cards. Yeah. So just like using uh, Archmage as a heal for seven tends to be a fine, fine in that in this matchup, and I think that's kind of what he was aiming towards. But with the World of coming out, respond. yeah, you gotta have to kill. It's too much damage. And an uh, important thing to note is uh, Firebat's actually gotten to the 8-mana stage where Lofeb can't lock you out because you have a Frost Nova in hand, which is excellent news. But, like, he's probably pretty tempted to already freeze this board. There's a lot of damage on board. Yeah, but then, like, do you have freezes for the Doomsayer? You used Cone of Cold already. You will have one Blizzard, maybe? There's uh, definitely one. If Cone of Cold tends to mean you cut a Blizzard, so there might only be one Blizzard. There's definitely one Flame Strike. Uh, there will be a second Frost Nova at some point I as mean, well. The board is not getting any smaller anytime soon, so there's yeah, no point. The in longer, going yeah, the Frost longer you wait on this Frost Nova, the better it actually will exactly. get. Exactly. And uh, it does play around this low feb, which would have pushed an insane amount of damage. Will we have, will we even see low feb this turn? Because Absolutely. like. Uh, because when, when you when you freeze mage reaches nine mana, which is like the Alex Straza turn, oh, quote this unquote. is yeah, this is true. You never want to be uh, playing your low feb into a turn where you might get Alex Straza. Uh, of, of course, like looking from Firebat's perspective, there's no Alex Straza, yeah. so the low feb is actually pretty cool here. Even though it just gets frost now, but it's still like pretty cool. But the longer you wait on this low feb, the more likely it is that freeze mage actually has Alex Straza in hand. Yeah, the big question is, is, can you wait one more turn? Um, yeah, I think you can. Yeah, you could just play this Horse Rider and. Uh, yeah, I kind of like playing Lothep. Um, oh, I mean, command phase. It, at this stage of the game, it's um, only it only matters to play Lothep when you have a board that's vulnerable to AOE. Yeah, absolutely. And this board right now with the Hyman on the board still, it's not vulnerable at all. So um, it's only vulnerable Lothep to like Nova later. Dooms here. You can also just drop the Lothep after, for example, after Alex Straza has been dropped, yep. which is also a good time. Oh boy. And um, Firebat goes in with this Emperor and his Frost Nova, and this low feb is going to be insane here. Yeah, it's going to be pretty good. Uh, Firebat has a one outer on Frost Nova number even, two. Even though Torison will not be contested here, like you can't kill Torison. Yeah. Um, but still, does it matter? Like, there's not a second Frost Nova yet, so it's like. Block is not being popped yet as well. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Firebat does, will have like, like almost free card drop for the rest of the game. And an Archmage that's going to cost five mana, which is pretty darn insane. You can trade into what? What, what is the secret? Uh, this is an ice block. That's both ice bears have been. This, yeah. yeah, this is an ice block. And Hunter doesn't have. That's got to be freezing trap. Yeah. That has to be freezing trap. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, no, no oh yet. no, low feb's been played. Like Fireback can just miracle this game away here with like arcane, arcane intellect. Oh wow! Uh, paying one, of, paying one of your uh, loot hoarder blood mage for an extra draw. Maybe you hit like you can hit. Lizard off Arcane Intellect. You can't hit it after the hero power on your own. So are you still keeping Lothep for that Alex Straza turn? Yeah, I think so. Or, or maybe for the turn he pops the block uh, as a more uh, aggressive route compared to reactive route. Actually, another interaction we have to consider is uh, when Thoris like, procs on the zero cost spell, and if that spell is getting increased uh, cost by Lothep, then it's actually like four. For example, yeah. like Icelands that cost minus one. 
quote unquote. Yeah, what the, we'll go to more. zero if the plus five. Yeah. So Blizzard was a possibility after Lotha. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yes. Yeah. Now it is. Uh, he could. Oh, is he just gonna archmage and he's gonna freeze the high main? I think. And use utilize his hero power maybe, or is he gonna drop his? Um... Can he go face? With oh boy, this is aggressive. I like it. Aggressive is good. Um, is he getting cost reduced? So he, oh wow, and this he has is... met scientist, so he he will be able to get one more ice block. Yeah, but the ice block that he cannot kill that on his own turn. So I've, he's relying actually on top decking the second ice block. Wait, can he can he not just uh, fireball face and fireball uh, med scientist? Like he has the minions as well. So right now he's putting right. He's as, gonna, assuming gonna your to... archmage doesn't die though, because you need that second fireball for lethal. Because there's 22 in hand minus the spell power, right? So you need to squeeze in two pings as well. So like this play is like soup. I don't think it's, I don't think this has a chance of working out to be honest. Well, right given now, the low five especially. You have to kill. You have to kill Antonidas here, right? If you no. kill Antonidas, no, you don't. You do not. You, you need to pop the block. Yeah, okay. popping the block is top priority, and then it forces if you, Fire if you can do, If block. you can do both, that's like, yeah, you do both, but you pop the block as the first priority. And the Emperor is actually scary to Infinitus in terms of uh, possibilities of uh, stuff that can actually happen. Well, Firebat has two draws as well. Oh, Frost Nova. Yep, that no, no, pops. Yep, block's getting popped. And, oh boy. Does the Archmage dies as well with the quick shot? Oh boy, and a kill command as well. Whoops. And there's a Lepronome on, on uh, board too, so you, like there's no board clears possible for the rest of the game here. And it seems like, or I mean, Ooh. the Ice Block will be able to uh, give help him a Fire Bet survive for one more turn, but does it actually matter? Uh, I don't think so. That Frost Nova is not discounted, correct? Yeah, yeah, it's not it's discounted, not. so he can't have like a turn with Alex Draza and Frost Nova. And that that's like why you killed the Emperor and not the Amphonitis. Yeah, it's yeah. because it's because like you're you're blocking possibilities you don't want the like discounts this. Anymore. Um so if he plays Ice Block, he's alive for one more turn. He yeah. can play Mad Scientist and uh the Mad Scientist doesn't there's no more secrets in the deck, so the scientist actually doesn't do anything. It's vanilla two two. Uh, the Lou Hoarder gets him a card closer to what? What is he looking for at this point? Uh, I guess it. Oh, Keelbot's actually a big one. He could go like Keelbot, Frost yeah, Nova, turn Frost after. Yeah, is an out. That's true. Yeah, absolutely. If he does play the Keelbot. Uh, I guess there's like not a reason to keep your scientist in your hand. Uh, but, oh, he's going to. Oh, he's going to ping his own guy to play around the silence. Yeah, that's yeah, actually that's a really good. solid play. I'm not attacking, obviously. And it seems like Artie is really close to free owing Firebat, which is a little surprising. That's but pretty good, yeah. Yeah, we've seen Hunter Hunter, before. Hunter, Hunter's been doing it a lot this tournament. Hunter's been doing good, even without the LT Gray. Yeah, you don't need the LT Gray to win. <laughs> is, that, is that how good Hunter is, or are you saying LT yeah. Gray is not a good card? No, I'm, I'm saying that uh, LT Gray is an amazing card. I LT Gray is, is just icing on the cake. I mean, on the amazing small <laughs> Tigre is just BM. <laughs> That's not Hillbot, so he, uh, can't, he, he can't draw into it. I mean, he can, but like then. Then doesn't have yeah, yeah. for Frost Nova, so yeah. this game it seems to be it's over. So much damage in hand. And Firebat just he looking hovers, at his deck size. He hovers <laughs> over his cards, and he, realize, he knows there's no more secrets. He does the Force in play, but it doesn't work. Oh it's my time. god, only Forsen can do that. Yeah, only Forsen can get the first one. takes the series, look at his happy face right wow. now. Wow, Hunter looked convincing in that matchup. Yeah, that was a pretty um, good start to the group, pretty fast. Yeah, absolutely. I'm like looking at this game, at this match, and I'm like, why the heck did I not bring Hunter to this tournament? Dude, it looks good. I'm just looking at this, this series, and it was so fast that Ecop didn't even finish his food. Like, look at this. Yeah, I mean, I was <laughs> expecting a longer series, but I guess um, once again, I was here at the casting couch. Once again, Hunter 3 0 someone. How do you come here? Uh, uh, no yeah. surprise. So, I don't know. Maybe it's Carm. Uh, ma ma maybe You're it's like. Be, uh, I don't joined know. by Ryu on the couch here. All right, Ryu, come here. Congratulations, Radu. You're one thanks, step thanks, closer thanks. to top eight. Thanks. Whoops. Okay. How, how does it feel to um, embrace the smork? Pretty good. Are you following in Froden's footsteps? Do you want to be as good a player as Froden? Um, I still need to misplay less. I think I misplayed a lot in the last game. Oh, no, you did not. That was really well executed, actually. Uh, the last turn with Antonidas, I could kill Antonidas with Pichat and like, sacrifice Leper. No. There was actually no reason to kill that Antonidas at that point. He had no outs. 
Yeah, I know. But yeah, I actually, still... I had no outs. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it was done perfectly. Actually, can you talk to me about the the mulligan where you actually keep high main against freeze mage? Yeah, when I won the coin, I just like to keep high main in like every greedy matchup. Like I just have a really low curve, and yep. uh, high main is the most expensive minion in my deck. So versus druid, warrior, freeze mage, all the greedy lineups. Basically, I just keep it in my starting hand if I uh, have the option to. Are you? I have to bring it to you. Are you do you realize you've won the series? Yeah. Because you, you're, you, you don't seem like you're really <laughs> you, you don't seem that um, happy. That is, you seem to be in the zone. Like you're super focused am, right when now. When I'm getting like super happy, I uh, tend to like play worse. So I'm like gonna keep my karma till I qualify to top eight because I'm not through yet. I still need to like win one more game. Yeah, I mean, Gnimsh, this is how RDU works. Even in victory, he still seems to find, he still wants to improve. He still wants to see his uh, what he's done wrong and what he what he can improve on. And like this is what makes RDU such an amazing player and a rightful victor for the uh, uh, yeah of this series right here. The chat is saying you can improve if you don't play Hunter. I mean, I can I, play everything, but I mean, uh, he's already Hunter is the option to win this tournament. I don't know, chat. And RDU, would you say like Hunter has been the best performing deck for you uh, so far? I mean, you 3 0 me with it as well. So Hunter is 6-0. The Warrior is 1-1. Um, the Druid is 2-0. And uh, the Paladin is not played. Oh, people are banning Paladin? What a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, they didn't ban it. I just didn't get to play it. He's oh, you're, oh, he's oh, oh, you're just yeah. crushing people, Hunter. Free one, free one. He doesn't even need Paladin to Nine win the That's amazing. Last year standing. That's amazing, Radu. So congratulations once again, and um, yeah, we'll see who's your who your opponent is going to be in the winners match. Uh, which uh, so yeah, up next we're gonna see uh, who is it? Stan Sivka versus Rekful on the stream. So, oh, Stan Sivka versus Rekful. Yeah, this is gonna be ex an exciting matchup for sure. Many people didn't actually expect Rekful to go through the first group stage, but he actually he made, made it, it be beating um, Lothar and Elki. So yeah, Rekful is uh, on a roll. And are you the question? Um, for you, who do you want to face, Stan Sivka or Regful next game? I want to face Regful, but uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's going to be possible. Why, why do you want to face Regful? Don't you know he's the, one of the best rogue players in the history of Warcraft? I mean, Regful is a really good player, but I have a lot of respect for Stan Sivka and I consider him to be on the top of his game right now. I he understands of, uh, everything that's going on in every single matchup. He's just like, I don't know. That is a political, politically correct answer, sir. Yeah, you've grown <laughs> up. You, you leveled up. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, uh, I think we're ready to go for break. Like, Purple, do you have any more questions for RDU? Oh no, absolutely not. Well played, RDU. Alright guys, we're gonna Thanks. hang out in here, so thank you so much for watching. We'll have more matches for you coming up.